for money in your pocket. Huh? You are the best family on YouTube. Rawr! So anyway, I wanted to do another episode talking about, or another video talking about the situation with FouseyTube and talk about the thing that I think a lot of people miss. A lot of people talking about what happened with this July 15th thing. I want to kill myself! A lot of people are focused on, oh, he's crazy. He's losing his mind. He's having a manic episode. And not to say that's not the case, but there's some other things that a lot of people seem to have missed. So... We're gonna go from the beginning. I'll try to be as quick and concise as possible. And then later on, I wanna talk about this whole manifesting destiny and uh, if you believe, you can achieve. We're gonna talk about all that stuff. There is some truth to it, but a lot of people are taking it to a completely different level. They're taking it to a completely different realm. And the realm that they're going into is absolutely bogus snake oil. I'm gonna tell you what the real deal is something that you can apply in your life to achieve your dreams for real as opposed to or for reals <laughs> anyway as opposed to just talking about it i'm gonna have trick at my show i'm gonna have i'm gonna sell 300 million copies of whatever book like that's like talk 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 i'm gonna talk about what you can actually do to make that actually happen in reality but before we do that let's talk about what led us to this july 15 situation with fousey tube <laughs> You're watching Carlisle's Pick. Hey, buddy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> FuzzyTube is one of the biggest YouTubers on the platform, about nine to 10 million subscribers on one channel. He has another channel with millions of subscribers as well. The camera, please. Now, one of the big reasons why he's as big as he is is because of, he used to do a lot of prank videos, a lot of fake prank video everybody and welcome to fussy tube fussy tube the self-titled two-pack of youtube nine million subscribers bold his real name is <laughs> it even punch me it didn't even feel like a punch uh, every single one of his pranks is 100 percent fake the only ones watching them are very young children mutants people with severe disabilities and he would manipulate his audience he would do these videos where he would you know, give out money to a supposed homeless guy. A lot of it was fake. <laughs> this is your tip for the lot, my man. So thankful. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, thank you. No, he never received these monies. He literally just made it rain on a black man because this is the person FoosyTube is. Shoving his money under the nose of the desperate to make himself look good. A lot of it was contrived to sort of make him seem like this, this great, giving, loving, and positive person. But in reality, it was all done for money. These type of things got him views and therefore money. And he has well established himself as someone who will do anything for money. Very greedy, very egotistical guy. And he's been this way for years. Kind of like saying, giving money to charity, spending some money advertising that fact, and then not giving to charity, but still making money from saying you gave to charity. You go out, you buy a new scooter, pretty little bell for it ringer every five minutes to remind everyone you've bought it, even though it was meant to be a birthday present for little Sally, the one-legged girl with the cleft palate, and you just kept it. Oh! The 99% of fake pranks on YouTube. So one of the very troubling videos that he did was a video where he would go into like poor neighborhoods and try to basically create these scenarios where it would make um, basically minorities look bad. He was promoting racism for money. That's the kind of guy that FouseyTube is. So if you were to say fake drama, <laughs> you could say fake drama is uh, Fousey's middle name. Maybe manipulation, fake drama, manipulation, um, Ego, he's got so many middle names. Anyway, that's his track record for years doing this, manipulating people um, and doing some really, really sick and twisted things. So let's fast forward. 
Back in the day, he was having thousands of people coming to events that he would plan uh, across the world. Recently, he did an event, only 300 people were there. He made a comment uh, recently talking about how he felt about the decline in his audience, right? So if we are to convict FouseyTube, we need to do like they would do in a court of law. We need to establish a motive. Why would he do this, right? What's the motive behind the things that he's doing? And that's exactly what I'm establishing, right? We established that he's all about the money. He'll do anything for views. He used to have thousands of people coming to his events. Now he's got just like 300. He used to get millions of views on all his videos. Now he's getting hundreds of thousands of views. Views are down, audience is down, right? What's the motive? Someone who's all about the money, does anything for views, right? I even incite racism. What will they do to get their views back? What will they do to get their popularity back? Someone that has little uh, restraint, right? There's little that they will not do. Well, recently there was this event called TanaCon. So TanaCon was basically an event where uh, some YouTuber planned this like a convention type of thing and it was planned very quickly. The whole idea was it was supposed to show up another event, a uh, competing event called VidCon, which a lot of people have a lot of negative things, negative things to say about it, and rightfully so. The event was a disaster. People paid $60 per ticket. There were a lot of lies told about free tickets and then it seems like everyone paid. Uh, most people didn't get in. The event ended up getting canceled. It was an absolute disaster. And that was TanaCon, right? Big whole conspiracy, um, just bad, very, very bad. And uh, FouseyTube, I'm sure, saw this. And again, he's all about the views, all about the money. And TanaCon got a lot of attention. News and big YouTubers talking about it. So if you want attention, seems like a great way to go about it. If that's all you want, and it uh, seems like that's what Foodie, Foos, Foodie, FouseyTube decided to do. So he did his event, uh, planned it within five days. He uh, was supposed to be 4,000 people. He's going to have Drake there and all these big artists. <sighs> yeah. So basically what Fousey did is he planned this event within five days, made up all these lies about Drake's going to be there and all these major artists are going to be there. And it's going to be his biggest deal. It's going to be the 2 million people watching the live stream. Just crazy, grandiose claims about this event, right? Big YouTubers are going to be there. All this kind of stuff, right? It's going to be the biggest event on YouTube, right? These are not his personal goals, his personal vision board. This is what he's telling to the world, right? He's inviting to an event based on these are the things he says that are happening. But most of it was basically lies, right? So... The event occurs and ends up getting canceled because of a bomb threat. But here's the important thing, right? End of the event, again, if it's all about views, it's all about attention, right? Look at everything he does in that context, right? If you want to talk yeah. outside without him, without him, without him, or the whoever is watching, yeah. and handle it between two yeah. real humans yeah. face to face and understand each yeah, other, and be, no, this makes, this makes no watching? difference. This makes no difference. So, first of all, you got the conspiracy angle, right? Conspiracy people are going to say, um, oh, he's copying Tanacon. He's trying to be exactly like Tanacon. And then you got Keemstar involved. And then it's like, oh, is Keemstar like part of it? Is the whole thing, you know, this sort of planned together? And I, I believe possibly it could be, but I'm not going to go that far. But a lot of people are going to make videos saying that, right? They're going to say about the connection with Tanacon, right? And then you get the bomb threat. People say he called in a bomb threat. I wouldn't be surprised. If you think he called in a bomb threat, <laughs> you're, uh, you're thinking on the right terms. Not saying he did that, but I'm pretty sure that he would do something like that. He's exactly the kind of person who would do something as disgusting as calling a bomb threat on his own event just for publicity. And if he did that, I really hope that the police find out and he gets what's coming to him because that's, that's garbage. And he's been doing this for years. Not like it's one mistake. He's been doing this and doing this and doing this. All these different things that he's done to manipulate his audience, spreading racism. I mean, 
I had a black person chasing a white person and the white person had a purse in his hand and the black person was saying stop. And then I had the white person chasing the black person and the black person was holding the purse and the white person was screaming stop. Who did I have society stop? The black person, both times. Get him, get him! Manipulated this fact for views, for money, for attention. He used the tragedy to give himself a platform to spread a message about racism. A message that transpired to be entirely staged. He justifies it by saying that racism exists and is very prevalent in America. Stating that he wanted to spark that conversation. A conversation that had already been sparked. And from all I've seen, no major consequence. I mean, his brand, some people say his brand is, is ruined. He doesn't really get the views that he did. But the views, that could be very much... YouTube, right? Um, but that's where we're at. So at the end of the event, he goes crazy. He's on top of a car and he's saying all this kind of stuff. I guarantee you I'll be with Drake tonight in the club. I promise you that. And he's got these purple socks on and, and he's got the, the wife beater on. He takes off. He has a, 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 he has a hoodie on. He takes the hoodie off and then he's got the wife beater on. And if that's not crazy enough, he's got to roll it up like a bra. And he's on top of the car and he's all like flailing around and doing all this kind of stuff. I mean, think about it. If all you want to do is get attention, right? And you, if you're desperate for attention, would it not seem that his execution was flawless? Because he's doing everything. He's trying to hit every single note. The flailing around. Oh. I gotta relax. The story how I met Drake. Fousey's gay. Look at him. He's so gay, right? He's got the purple socks on and the thing like a wife beater. That's like uh, half people are gonna say gay and then the other half like he's crazy. He's losing mind. Look what he's doing. And he's on top and he's screaming and you know, you know, uh, Kim Star, you made me want to kill, kill myself. <laughs> Right, he's screaming and people are like, oh man, this guy's losing his mind. Like that alone, the screaming on top of the car, that's gonna get so much attention, right? People are gonna make videos and show how he was screaming and all this kind of stuff. Fuzi's losing his mind, Fuzi went crazy, uh, Fuzi blah blah blah, Fuzi Khan disaster, right? So many videos based on that. The gay angle, the crazy angle, the uh, conspiracy with Keemstar angle, right? Again, people look at this as a real event and for that they're saying it was a flop, right? But what if it's not a real event? What if it's completely a publicity stunt, right? If that's the case, then it was a success as far as publicity. However, the end goal is where it actually fails because he didn't want, I don't think, he wanted publicity just to have publicity. He wanted publicity that could lead to revenue, right? And audience growth. You want and make a big noise, everybody's talking about him, they come look at his videos, they're like, wow, his video's actually kind of cool, they subscribe, his subscriber base grows. By growing his subscriber base, he gets more views in the future, so he can take a loss now and then make millions down the road, right? Think about it, he's got 10 million subscribers. Let's say he gains another 5 million from this, right? New, fresh eyeballs, and they like his content going forward. So these new fresh eyeballs start watching all of his videos, his, his uh, views grow, his channel uh, is sort of rebirthed, and then the money goes back up, the fame goes back up, right? So that being the end goal, then so far it looks like a failure because his music video, which he launched at the same time, people believe the whole thing was to promote the music video, which would again bring attention to his channel, right? Most viewed video, top of the charts, that's what he said, right? Only 1.5 million views in a few days. Um, Kingstar has 2 million views on this. And uh, PewDiePie has like 5, 6 million views talking about this. So people talking about it are getting way more views than FouseyTube. That is where he's at. That is kind of the problem that he's probably trying to address. And I can appreciate that. I've got 33,000 subscribers, my views are way down. Basically, in reality, YouTube has basically banned my channel. Most of my uh, subscribers don't even get notified on my, on my videos. Now, I don't have the ego problem, I don't have an insecurity problem, so, you know, I'm human, so some part of me is bothered by, I worked so hard for so many years building up my channel, and now I post a video, I might get like 200 views. So part of me is, you know, there's a somber note to that. But because I'm not insecure, because I don't have ego, because I'm not doing this for money, it's not something that I'm going to go and, you know, I'll just kind of do some craziness, right? But now you look at Fousey, someone who has an ego problem, someone who's so focused on money, 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 right? Me, 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 right? Egocentric. 
Um, what would it do to him to have his views that were so high, all of a sudden they're down, you know, sort of make him lose his mind or make you think he's losing his mind. So he, he does these interviews as well. So after that incident, does these interviews with Adam 22 and he's, he's yelling at people, he's screaming, you know, I'm telling you to your face and blah, 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 blah. And you're a B-I-T-C, you know what, you know what I mean? Dropping B word and just really, really aggressive and screaming and getting up in a guy's face. Um, Damn, you little this WWE guy. Thank you, my bro. I'm staring at you in the face this and telling you that you and again, if the idea is attention, <laughs> if the idea is fame and attention, these are, are perfect things to do, right? Because again, more people talk about, Fousey lost his mind, Fousey yelled at this person, Fousey attacked this other person. You know, these are all things, this is all content and it's working. Tons of people are talking about this, major YouTubers are talking about this. I haven't done many videos in a while and I'm even talking about it, right? So you've woken up a dead channel. <laughs> Uh, you know, Carlisle's Picks. Hey, this is Carlisle's Picks, the top products list. I talk about things that I'm passionate about, like um, electronics and aviation and uh, marine, and, you know, yachts, jets, boats, cars, motorcycles, right here on Carlisle's Picks. So again, if the goal is, and I believe it is, just to get attention, just to get views, to revive the channel, um, then he succeeded, right? It's on the news, right? It's on the news! You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's on the news. So, you know, everyone's talking about it. And then the whole crazy angle. Okay, so he does have this uh, bipolar issue. However, is it really, are we really looking at a bipolar situation? Meaning, how much of this is his condition and how much of it is by design? Because again, if all you want is attention, right? If all you want is that views that you're going to get from that attention, then, you know, how much of this stuff is by design? The acting crazy, uh, make people, you know, play up your illness, right? People know you're, you're bipolar and they're going to start talking about, oh, he's having a manic episode, all this kind of stuff. Is he really? Oh, he's off his meds. How do you know he's off his meds? Did he just say he's off his meds, but he's actually taking his meds, right? So that he can do this craziness and then just say, oh, uh, you know, I'm bipolar, guys, right? He can play the victim, right? Oh, how dare you guys bully, uh, bully me, gang up on me, right? I'm, I'm ill. I'm ill. How dare you gang up on, on an ill person, right? Maybe he is having a manic episode. I don't know. But you have to remember this is a very manipulative person who will do anything for views and attention, right? He's proven this for years. He's doing it again now. He said Drake was going to be at his show. What about being bipolar made him lie and say Drake's going to be there? Even if he's, you know, really motivated and thinking positive, right? Um, he actually said he met Drake and Drake said he never knew him. Drake said he never heard of this guy, right? So he's straight up lying. That's not bipolar. That's just manipulative, right? So finally, what I want to talk about is this whole manifesting destiny stuff. So people talk about manifesting destiny, the, the law of attraction. There is a real part of that, some stuff that I've even applied in my life, but there's a the fantasy world as well. You can't just dream and, and say, you know, I'm going to be the most successful person in the world and it's just going to happen, right? I see myself in a private jet and then all of a sudden the private jet appears. That's not how it works. The way it works is through actions, right? If you keep thinking about your dreams, you keep thinking about your goals, by thinking about them all the time, it's gonna remind you so you can actually do actions. Let's say you wanna be uh, a, a, a award-winning author, right? But you don't think about it, right? You, that's your plan and you, you think about it one day and you put it aside, weeks go by, days go by, weeks go by, months go by, you haven't done anything about this. Uh, months and months go by, you haven't done anything about it, right? But if you're constantly thinking about this, you're seeing yourself as this world-famous author, every day you're thinking about this, then since it's in your mind, that's gonna lead you to take action, right? So you get up in the morning, I am gonna be the biggest author of whatever, right? And after you think that, you're, you're like, how do I make that happen today? Let me go do some research. Let me go study. Let me go practice something. Let me go do something that's going to take me closer to my goals. And every day, if you keep thinking about and keep visualizing this, you have pictures of uh, famous authors. You can do a pho Photoshop yourself on a, on, on, on a news article, whatever it is that it takes. So you can keep focused on your goal. 
right? That's what you want to do. Keep focused on your goal. So therefore you can be able to act on your goal. And that's the magic. Not just going and saying, oh, Drake's going to be at my show when it's a complete lie. Oh, I'm going to sell 300 million. No, that's your, your vision board that you keep to yourself. So you can motivate yourself to take actions which will lead you to accomplish your goal. That's the real deal. That's how it's actually done. That's the, the real sort of law of attraction and all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's not any in law, it's really just a, a strategy, right? Ultimately, it's a strategy to help guide you and keep you focused and, and see, sort of keep you on the path towards achieving your dreams. Anyway. My vision board for the day, I've accomplished a lot of my vision boards, but uh, let's do a new one. My vision board is, I am right now uh, producing one of the best how to ride a motorcycle videos in the world on my Your Fast Life Motorcycle channel, which is the best motorcycle channel in the universe, yay, yay. Anyway, um, so that is my personal goal right now, uh, one of many, and I'm going to keep thinking about that, and by thinking about it, I'm going to keep acting on that, like I'm actually filming the stuff right now, and um, through the constant action, thought that leads to actions, more thoughts lead to more actions, more thoughts lead to more actions, and actions, and actions, and actions, and results, right? So stay tuned. Let's see if I accomplish that goal, but that's the way you do it. You think, then you act, right? And through those actions, you achieve your actual goals. That is how you actually do it. This is how you do... Okay. <laughs> this is Carlisle Spix. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and subscribe. But don't do that unless you're going to click on the bell as well. So... The reason why you need to do that is because on this channel, you're only going to get notified on videos if you click on the bell, right? Because my channel is basically banned by YouTube, um, not because of anything I did. That's just how the platform is. That's what Fousey's dealing with. That's how I'm dealing. That's what I'm dealing with it. But instead of going crazy and doing all this uh, antics, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to address the issue by actions and strategy, right? Um, and uh, that's the way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about doing it. So you can follow me on my journey and see if I'm able to actually recover my channel. And to do that, subscribe and click on the bell icon so you can get notified when I upload new videos. And again, once again, I recommend top products. I share things that I'm passionate about on this channel. I love motorcycles. I love cars. I love jets. I love boats. And I love technology as well. I love to travel. So I talk about all these things here. Basically, if I see anything that I'm passionate about, something that I'm excited about, something that I think is really awesome, I share it with you guys right here on Carlisle's Picks. And if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then I definitely encourage you to join Carlisle's Picks. See you soon.